I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a VR headset. I just don't. Uh, so up until I bought my Quest 2 in 2021, VR was always resigned to be something that I would just do every now and then when I, can, when I could afford to go to an arcade. So now fast forward to 2023, I do have a PC and I'm in the PC VR as well. Um, but looking at the options for people who maybe don't want to be in Meta's ecosystem or ByteDance's ecosystem, your options are pretty limited. The Reverb G2 has been discontinued. The HTC Vive Cosmos has been discontinued, at least here in the United States. You could buy any of those on the secondary market, but if you're trying to buy something directly from a company, your options are pretty slim. That's where this comes in. This is the DP VR E4. Full disclosure, I was sent this headset by the company for purposes of this review. I'm sorry about banging that on my desk. And I want to thank them for the opportunity. This headset retails for about $500, depending on what region you're in. There are some pros and cons to it. We're going to go through each of these throughout the course of the video. All right, let's get into the unboxing. I'm going to apologize in advance. I did shoot this on my phone because the tripod for my camera was not acting right and the camera kept drooping. So I had to do all this one handed. Uh, the box is really thick and sturdy. This did come over all the way from China. So the box that came in was, was like double walled insulated. And this box itself was very sturdy and really well protected. So really wasn't worried about any um, issues of the product being damaged. Getting to the box, you can see the breakout box and attach to the cord right away. The top strap is elastic with two settings. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, let's keep working past that. There's the breakout box. This is a display port headset. So there's a direct display port there that comes out for the breakout box that sits just behind your neck. I'm six feet tall, so it was right around like the back of my neck. Honestly, really didn't bother me. And it is mounted to the back right where the tight twisting knob is. So you don't really feel the cord on the back of your shoulder. It doesn't brush across the shoulders or anything like that. It is a halo strap design that you can see right in there. And I'll show it again in a minute. Uh, that there's no padding inside, like right there. There's no padding inside the faceplate. I thought that was gonna bother me and in truth, it really didn't. It's there because of the flip up design, because otherwise when you flip it back down, you're going to be smacking yourself in the face over and over and over again. The controllers look like a take on the Quest 2's controllers, except the controller, the tracking rings are slightly bent. They're at an angle, uh, but they felt sturdy. The buttons didn't feel cheap or anything. And more importantly, the analog sticks. I've had major, major issues with the analog sticks on my Quest 2. These feel a lot sturdier and hopefully they're not gonna drift as bad as my Quest 2 once did. Like my Quest 2 is borderline unplayable because I had to adjust the dead zone so hard that there's almost no wiggle room for that. And inside there's your uh, setup guide, there's a manufacturer's warranty in there. You open everything up and there's the rest of your cords. That's your display port cord and your USB-C 3. I'm gonna pause right here. This is the other end of the cord. This is the part that's closer to your computer right before it splits into the display port and the USB plug. Uh, you do have to plug an AC adapter into that. You do get to set the wireless earbuds with these. I appreciate that they were put in, but honestly, I just prefer to use my own. But for someone who doesn't have a set on hand right away, um, these they're perfectly serviceable. I should point out that the breakout box that's coming off the back of the headset, that's actually where your, um, where your audio jack is. So you do want something with a little bit longer cord to be able to get all the way back there. There is no audio jack on the side of the headset at all. It's on this piece here's a set of clips to hook up the cord however you want to um this is hooked on the back of the headset right there and then the breakout box just kind of falls down the back of your neck so honestly this wasn't that big of an issue for me because they already did some of that work for you here's a set of lens protectors that come with the headset they're rubber they fit right over the lenses they're fine there's nothing really much to say about those and finally, here's your power adapter. Like I said, the plug was specifically made for US, but you have converters for whether you're in Europe or Asia, um, you have the other converters for any type of plug, no matter what region you're in. So good that they included those right away. You don't have to go buy those on the secondary market. On to setup, this is pretty straightforward. You go to DPVRE4's website. Uh, you go over to download support tools that'll take you over to their support tools site. And here you just download the DPVRE4 assistant software setup. Uh, this is not natively recognized by Steam, so you do need to have the software running to be able to use it. But when I benchmarked this, it actually took up less resources on my PC than any other, um, like the Oculus PC software or the Pico software that I've tried. So uh, I was pretty happy with that. When you run the software, it will do a quick compatibility check to make sure that your PC is uh, VR ready. That happens very quickly. Once you hit next, then you're straight into the setup. You do get a promo video that plays while you're installing it. Uh, most of it's hype. It shows that the headset does have inside out tracking, goes over the field of view, 
and all the basics of it. After the setup happens, you have to sign up for a DPVR account. I just use my regular email, just took maybe a minute. And then walks you through the steps to send up the batteries, uh, how to set up the breakout box. This all, if you've ever set up P uh, PCVR headset before, this really shouldn't be all that different to you. But for new people, this is a really good guide that they put out there um, to walk you through all the steps. Next step is setting your refresh rate. The default is 72 hertz. It does go all the way up to 120. I ran 120 for every game that I played. I only ran into an issue with it on one game, which is No Man's Sky. And that game is notoriously not well optimized for VR in the first place. To connect the controller, all you have to do is just hit one button uh, and just detect it right away. That's for both controllers. It picks up right away. You do have to wake them up each time too. At this point, you're going through the room setup. I couldn't film this, unfortunately, um, but the pass through is black and white. Um, and it's a bit darker than the Quest 2 is, which made it less pixely, but still it's black and white pass through. It's not really something I find myself thinking I'm going to use. But you just walk, you do a 360 to like scan your room. You set your guardian very quickly. Uh, all standard stuff. It took less than a minute to do everything. After that, you're done. Your headset's ready to go. Your controls are ready to go. And there's a little Steam button in the top right corner, just below the X, where you close the software out. Uh, you just click that to do Steam VR. Then we're gonna hop into the IPD setting. This is done in headset. There is no manual adjustment of the lenses. You have to use the software to do it. My IPD is fairly large. It's 72 when I measured it across a couple of iPhone apps, and I didn't have any issues with it. Got a nice, sharp, clear picture. These are Fresnel lenses. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, so the sweet spot did take me a minute to figure out because it's a bit different. If you use a bunch of different Fresnel lens headsets like a Rift S or a Quest 2, um, it just takes a minute to kind of find it because each headset sweet spot is different, but didn't take that long to get into it at all. I should point out that when you use the hinge functionality on this, as I was going through this, once you use the hinge functionality on this, um, it, I did have to adjust the headset a couple of times to get it back in the sweet spot, but it you're talking a matter of seconds so when you first get the headset it's at 20 percent brightness when i first put it on before i adjusted the brightness up this is after i adjusted the brightness up i was like whoa this headset's way too dark what's wrong with this i went back in i put the brightness at 100 percent, and i was blown to a point where i was like i don't think i can use this this is a very very bright uh display headset so i settled on around 62 percent and when i went on their discord that's other users what they were doing they were all around the 60 percent range as well they do provide this chart comparing it to other headsets and it's like price range. Obviously comparing this to something like a Varro headset or uh, an index doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Those are in different tiers. This is more for the budget friendly uh, user. So you're comparing this to the Pico 4, the Quest 2, uh, the Vive Cosmos and uh, Reverb G2. We already talked about those last two. Unfortunately, those are no longer able to, those no longer being supported by the manufacturer. So you have to buy those on the secondary market. In terms of the breakdown, uh, only the Pico 4 has pancake lenses out of anything on this list. So if you're someone who's diehard pancake lens, that may be an issue for you. Uh, this is easily, of all the Fresnel lenses I've used, this was easily the one that had the best picture. Uh, resolution is the same as the Quest 2. It's 1832 by 1920 per eye or 3664 by 1920 overall. Uh, the refresh rate, it can go as high as 120. Um, and really that depended on what game you were playing on Steam. Uh, the field of view is noticeably better than any other headset I've put on 116 degrees. It gave a nice wide picture. So even though it was for no lenses, field of view was fantastic. I was really happy with that. Binocular overlap is something a lot of people don't talk about. What that basically means is that it's how much, how much of the image that you're looking at can be seen by both eyes. So if you had like, let's say something that was off to the left, 100% uh, binocular overlap means that if you close your left eye, you can still see that thing all to your left with your right eye by itself. Any headset that's below 100 means that if you can see like the very edge of it with your left eye, that means you probably couldn't see most of it with your right eye. Uh, so this one has 100% binocular overlap, which really kind of helped the field of view and give you a better picture. Uh, weight wise, this is the lightest headset without the head strap. It barely, barely, barely nudges out the Pico 4. Compared to something like an HTC headset, those tend to run pretty heavy, or even the Quest 2, this felt very light on the head. The headset is a halo design that's just to allow for this flip up option that I love so much. This is like my favorite feature of this headset. Um, but again, I have, I talked about this in another video. I've got a pretty big forehead, so this really was an issue for me. Um, they do provide the top strap, but the top strap is, in fact, let me switch cameras. Okay, back to this. So the top strap is elastic and it's got some bend to it. Um, I'm going to revisit this and do another review on this headset in about a month to see if this starts to stretch a while because it feels like just a really, really thick rubber band. And there are two settings to it. You can see two, let me get it up to the camera. There are two notches to it. Uh, one for like smaller heads, you know, people that aren't me. 
and one for big head folks like me um this does kind of hurt getting into the sweet spot exactly because you don't have exact um control over where the top trap goes as if you had like a velcro set um but again like finding the sweet spot wasn't that hard honestly after years of using the quest 2 and constantly doing this number to get into the sweet spot this works perfectly fine there were two firmware updates since i got the headset three weeks ago as i record this video um one of them was a major tracking update there is one weird thing that happens with steam that i'll talk about in specific games i'll talk about that in a second i spent about 20 hours in the headset uh i tested let me run through what i tested i tested no man's sky a game called elysium trials uh qvr after the fall among us vr which you're not going to see any footage of that because i didn't record it uh, Ultimax again, I didn't record that so you're not gonna see any footage and the medieval VR when I wasn't streaming I was able to run most of the games either ultra or high when I'm streaming I just by default set it to medium uh, Because my GPU is being strained extra this really came into play on no man's sky because and this is not an indictment on this headset at all But no man's sky has that double eye fish eye look so you have to use VR view to do that So basically between that and streaming my GPU was rendering no man's sky three different times and that caused all kinds of performance issues again nothing to do with the headset but you will see some jitter when I show you the No Man's Sky footage. Uh, a couple things I noticed right away, um, and this will be a negative for it. I'm not a big fan of the microphone. It's bassy and it's peaky at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna unmute the audio so you can hear what the microphone sounded like. Everyone, QVR is a peaceful voxel sandbox game with beautiful graphics. Yeah, just wasn't a fan. Um, just wasn't a fan of this. I thought the Quest 2 mic performed better. The Rift S mic is worse than this, believe it or not. I am not a fan of that microphone at all. This one's a bit of a knock kiss the headset. The mic's not fantastic. In terms of the gameplay, didn't really notice any ghosting. Didn't really notice any screen door effect. Except again on uh, after the fall. So I noticed a little bit of screen door effect. Um, I went back and turned the refresh rate down. It was on 120. I turned it down to 90 and then reset the game and started over. And it ran perfectly fine. After that, no issues whatsoever. Coming back to the hinge part, this is something that I'm really, really excited about. The pass-through is black and white, like I said earlier, and that was a bit of a letdown, but it didn't really matter because I could just flip this up and either check my phone or get a drink of water or do whatever, check whatever's going on on the stream and then turn this back down and keep it moving. I love this. I think every VR headset should have this. Um, the elastic band, I wish there were more settings for this. Since this part isn't Velcro, uh, you really have the two settings. You're really kind of left to uh, the tightening knob on the back and getting the uh the front part using the halo strats to really kind of get this in great position the top strats really meant it's like auxiliary support as opposed to being the main support of the headset that's a little bit different than some other um some other top strap designs i've used but since i use a halo on my quest 2 maybe has more experience with this i got it done pretty quickly there is no nosebleed on the bottom here. Uh, the flaps on the nose just kind of like split here. They're very, very, very soft like silicon rubber. You see, if you ever use a Quest 2 and you look down the bottom where your nose is, there's quite a bit of like bleed in there. It kind of break your immersion if immersion is something that you really deeply care about. Didn't really notice that with this. I have a fairly wide nose and this just contoured around it perfectly fine. I love this for people who want to get into PC VR. Uh, but don't want to be in either of those other two companies ecosystems and still want something that is widely supported so for people who are looking to get into sims like microsoft's flight simulator or like a set of corsa or, or dirt rally 2.0 f1 whatever um it's a great headset for that it's very very affordable and it works perfectly fine uh tracking wise i didn't notice any issues with it there have been tracking updates i went back and re read the release notes for the firmware this happened before i got the headset and the two i've gotten since the headset um, and like half of those have to do with tracking. So as just like Meta or any other company, as more users use the headset and they get more tracking data back, they're gonna be able to refine it and do better and better. There was a weird hand thing that I noticed when I was playing Cube. I'll put that on the screen now. Basically where my hands were compared to where they were in VR was a little bit off. There's a skeletal input that this headset currently doesn't support. I have submitted that to DPVR and hopefully that gets fixed in the firmware update because, and again, this was just for Cube. Uh, this only game I really noticed this in, my hand would be out of position compared to where the object was. And I would throw things off if I was using like telekinetic, like grab. This isn't because, I, I mean, I'm very clumsy and I'm not good at catching things anyway, um, but the, the uh, headset really didn't help me in that respect. So like I said at the beginning, this has really kind of become my daily PC VR driver. I have a Pico 4 right over here. I'll set it up. I've been testing this one as well. Um, and this works on for PCVR as well. Honestly, this one's just more comfortable. And 
uh, the Pico 4 doesn't have an audio jack. So that kind of ruled that out. Um, the other thing was the display port connection. There are people who are sensitive to compression artifacts. And I'll put some of those up on the screen right now so you can see what those are. If you're using a link cable or if you're using wireless for PC VR on your Quest or any other standalone headset, compression artifacts are a thing that happens. Uh, there are people who are sensitive to those. There are people, these will actually make people sick if they see them in rapid motion. Uh, because this is a display port headset, it doesn't have any of that issue. And to get that for this price, I think it's a pretty good deal. So would I recommend this headset for you if you already have multiple other headsets? It really depends on what you're going to use it for. I do think this is a better PC VR headset uh, than the Quest 2, specifically because of the display port input and the fact that the brightness is just so much better. I didn't realize how dark my Quest 2 was because I didn't play with brightness settings on the ones I used the arcades until I cranked this all the way to 100 and was just blown away by how bright it was and to the point where I had to scale it back down. I will be doing another video on this after I spend more time in it. I'm recording this just before Quest 3 comes out, so that'll be a fun comparison as well. Uh, so once I get Quest 3, we're actually going to do a breakdown of this versus Quest 3 versus Pico 4 versus Quest 2. Those are all the ones I have access to. I don't think I should really break out the Rift S at this point because that's not really going to be a great comparison. But I will do all those, break those down, and hopefully be able to give you a a really good breakdown of, of all the budget friendly versions for PC VR plus standalone you can get what's going to be the better bang for your buck. But again, I've been using this for PC VR basically exclusively since I got the headset and I'm very, very happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions about this headset in uh, the comments. This is my first product review, so I'm pretty sure I missed a lot of things. So feel free to ask me anything and I'll be able to answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, more product reviews are coming. We're going to be reviewing uh, charging docks, the Quest 3 itself, any kind of grips or anything I can get my hands on. So as always, thanks for watching.